Welcome to Behind the Story with American Media. Stay tuned for my in-depth conversation with Archbishop Bashar Warda of Erbil about Pope Francis's historic visit to Iraq. For more videos like this, subscribe to our YouTube channel. And for complete coverage of that trip to Iraq, visit americamagazine.org Iraq 2021. Archbishop Borda, thank you very much for taking the time to speak with us today and for being here in New York City. You're welcome. Thank you. On March 5th, Pope Francis arrived in Iraq. It was the first time a pope had ever set foot in the country of Iraq. Um, it was a very highly anticipated visit. Um, he was felt compelled. He said that. He said he felt compelled to go. He had wanted to come to Iraq for a long time. It happened in the middle of a global <laughs> pandemic. Uh, there were obviously enormous security challenges, but I'm just wondering, like, when he set foot in Iraq, when the plane landed and he got off the plane, what was going through your mind and what was in your heart? Um, what we call, finally, dream come, dreams <laughs> come true. That's, that's what we uh, said. Uh, it was really a historical, beyond really explanation, that uh, finally uh, the wish of His Holiness, we know it's a long story uh, story it started in the in the celebration of the jubilee mm -hmm. when uh, in 2000 with john 2000, paul ii and yes and i mean circumstances did not help but uh, and i personally when uh, when isis attack on attacks our our uh, villages in Mosul and then were playing with the flood of the whole christian and yazidis this is Pers 2014 2014 okay. personally i was expecting him at any time to land <laughs> and to to be with the with the people because this is pope francis we know yes, uh, yes. very close uh, but i i'm i could understand the uh, the circumstances and situation that have been been there and he showed i mean because everyone uh, as bishops patriarch who visited him in rome and met him in rome we always say when you visit iraq and he was saying waiting waiting so, yeah, finally, uh, thing. I mean, the whole event was there and it started uh, the, the journey of, of joy for the whole of Iraq. Now, you're the Archbishop of Erbil, which is in the northern part of Iraq, and, and I think uh, where a lot of the Christians in Iraq uh, were, I mean, historically, have, have lived, right? I mean, until, until, the, uh, until ISIS came through and the persecution and the exodus happened, right? Historically, Erbil is a very Christian, ancient uh, city, but, you know, because history ups and downs, people moved uh, to other parts of the country, came back. But uh, the big uh, community which came and settled in Erbil uh, started at the end of 2004, and uh, when, when the bombing of churches in Baghdad and Mosul, kidnapping priests, killing, kidnapping Christians. Mm. So all of these difficulties made some of the Christians to think of moving to Erbil and settle there. Quite secure, uh, security has been provided, lived among a Christian enclave in Ankawa. Uh, so it's a growing city when it comes to the number of the Christians. I mean, in, uh, in 2003, the community was around around uh, 2,000 families. Hmm. Uh, today, it's over 7,000 families, wow. which we know, or most of them came from Baghdad and Mosul. In two th 2010, when the massacre in the in the Church of Lady of uh, Our Salvation in Baghdad, where insurgent came and killed the pr the, the people who were praying and celebrating mass there was also another flock of people coming to, to settle in Erbil. The, the majority came in the attack of ISIS in August 2014. Over three, 13,000 families settled in Ankawa and found the refuge in Ankawa. Uh, some of these families left the country, unfortunately. Others uh, stayed, uh, around 2,000 families stayed in Ankawa. 8,000 families went back to their liberated village. Mm. So I would say, yes, uh, uh, Erbil uh, could be considered one of the largest uh, Christian community present there. 
I know so many people were nervous about the Pope flying up to the northern part of Iraq because that was, you know, in Mosul in particular, right, is, is where he prayed in the square. The images are incredible, right, with the, 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 destruct, the buildings destructed, uh, destroyed from, from ISIS um, and a prayer for, for peace uh, that Pope Francis participated in there was really, really moving. Um, but how, how is the rebuilding of Mosul and those communities going? Are, the, are Christians coming back now since ISIS has been defeated? Uh, the whole visit of His Holiness, uh, I mean, really, it's a very courageous one. But also, he made he made sure that he would really address uh, certain issues and needs of the of the uh, Iraqi and uh, in general Iraqi people. And one of them is the need of the international help and fund of for rebuilding Mosul. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you've seen the uh, the images came from Mosul. It's really hurting and was very yes. painful to see the old city um, completely destroyed. And that's what is one of the reasons why Christians are not going back to the to that side mm -hmm. of, of the city, which has been known historically as a very Christian, ancient, four churches around and many uh, around that area. Lack of funds is, is a big uh, obstacle for rebuilding Mosul. Then some of the Christians also, they don't find it secure yet socially to go. Others have settled already in, in uh, Erbil or in Duhok. Unfortunately, some left the country. So a total of 70 families uh, are back to Mosul. Hmm. Now we are talking about 70 families in the city of Mosul, which I believe uh, it hosted 5,000 families in 2003. Wow. But because of all of these, I mean, troubled time, the city was left without Christians. So his visit to that site, yeah, many messages of peace, reconciliation, forgiveness, um, but also as well, it was important for the whole world to see and hopefully to act. Mm -hmm. And acting means really uh, granting funds to rebuild that part of the city. Yeah, the uh, the images, like I said, were incredible. Um, the words that Pope Francis spoke, you, you named a few of them, talking about fraternity, being peacemakers. I mean, I felt he was asking a lot of the of the Iraqi people and Iraqi Christians, saying, you know, you have to you have to be proactive in being peace builders and being people of forgiveness and, and understanding this patient witness and talking about the cross. Um, how was that, his messages that were delivered to the Christians there received? The Iraqi people have suffered a lot. This is a uh, hundred years of suffering really. And when, it come, when, when the whole of country would suffer, definitely the minority will suffer more. Right. And, and the effect of all of this political and social economical problem usually is being felt heavily on, on the minorities. Uh, however, uh, I think the model for, for really healing is not to stay in the status of being a victims and victimhood. Mm. No, no, it's yes, we've suffered and we have to bear, I mean, uh, this uh, with with love to for for our I mean for our mission as as disciples and messengers for, of of God and Christ, and to look forward, uh, I mean making making a positive, uh, Im, uh, what you call impact and influence from this suffering, to build the to build the country because at the end of the day we will be responsible uh, for the future. Yes, we are not responsible for what happened uh, uh, to us in the pa in the past. Of, I mean, that's 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 why it's not. But as for today and tomorrow, it's in our hands, either to stay, uh, what you call at the fruit of uh, fruit of the cross, there, crying for all what happened to us, or to take that cross and show that yes, the 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 power of healing is from within us. All we have to uh, to do is to accept this vocation and responsibility and move forward in, in that sense. And here we have a call from, from His Holiness to be builders, 
to be teachers, to be an active players in, in the life of the Iraqi people. No, and and the, the, the kind of forgiveness that we offer as victims would be a powerful one. Mm -hmm. Would be a powerful one for the whole society around us. Um, not taking revenge, not thinking of revenge, but healing from within because we are Christians mm -hmm. in, in a sense. And that that's was always the history of Christianity yeah. uh, in, in that part of the world. And I do believe that His Holiness meant uh, every word uh, because he also believed in us that we could do that. Mm -hmm. uh, because he, he, when he looked on uh, around uh, the city and in the faces of people, he would, uh, he would recognize the hope is there, just believe in it. We saw it on the faces of the people who came out to see him. I mean, I was, I was really, maybe not surprised, but really inspired to see the response that, that people gave, the welcome that people gave to him. I mean, like I'm th the images when he, when he was traveling to Karakosh, the, the streets lined with people. I mean, but joy, celebration. I mean, this was obviously, uh, yeah, exactly that, right? A celebration after a, a long kind of period of darkness. Um, but maybe that, does, maybe that does, it doesn't surprise you that that was the response. Well, that's, that's the only response when you get uh, to the place or to the uh, status of being, I mean, uh, cured. Uh, yes, we, we are sad for what happened, uh, injured uh, deeply. But this is not the end of the story. Time there would be there would be always a time for destruction and time for rebuilding. Mm -hmm. And uh, when it comes to Karakosh and Karamles, Bartilla, Batnaya, Tilluskov, all of these uh, villages being rebuilt now by the efforts of the, of the Christians, of the local Christians, and the help of the international community, and also Catholic aid agencies by churches, Christians from around the world. Yeah, uh, the, the hope is there, and that hope is, is a call for responsibility. So when, when, when a guest of Iraq uh, uh, would come, the father of the Catholic Church, you don't expect less than this <laughs> celebration. And if he would stay longer, then probably he would find it more, more uh, of celebrations, various of celebrations in a sense. Yeah, no, I thought, that, like I said, that was very, very inspiring. A, a key part of his message was also, and you touched on this, um, to say, you know, you Christians have a responsibility for the wider society, and the, the, the society itself will suffer if the diversity that has traditionally, historically been part of Iraq's makeup mm -hmm. as a country, as a nation, is diminished. Um, how did that message uh, resonate with the non-Christians. I mean, the, uh, Iraq's a majority Shia Muslim com uh, country, right? I think 60 or 65 percent Shia. Um, how did that message resonate with non-Christians there? One of the uh, really positive or very powerful aspects of, of His Holiness visit was uh, prior, to, uh, two weeks prior to his visit, the local channels and media start really talking and uh, interviewing people uh, to talk about Christian presence in Iraq, the historical sites, about monasteries, shrines, and it was uh, seen all over these channels. And um, uh, especially the last two days prior to his, to his visit, we were really uh, very busy just to, uh, to respond to the calls from this channel, that channel. It was really great. I mean, for the first time, for the first time, Iraqis started to know about this community, mm. which have not immigrated from Europe uh, in the 16th or 17th century, came with the missionaries or came with the British colony. No, no. It's rooted there for, for almost 2,000 years. You know, one of the problems that we have that within the Iraqi curriculum, there is nothing mentioned about Christian and Christianity and nothing. Interesting. Uh, so that's why people would be ignorant uh, about, about this community and what they sometimes, God forbids, when they hear from, from some imams or from mm -hmm. some scholars that those are infidels, those are of course, the, the, the attitude, the impression will not be uh, a, a good one. 
But when, when His Holiness uh, announced that He is going definitely to visit Iraq, the whole local media start building on this and showed many monasteries to, to the people mm -hmm. and interviews, signs, flags, all of this, it was seen. Yeah. Who are the Christians? Who are the Christians? This, uh, of course, does not say that we were not, for example, uh, contributing to the, to the Iraqi nation. Right. Part of this media campaign was also to show that this community through their schools, through their hospitals, scholars, personnel, figures have contributed a lot to the, to the Iraqi nation. Needless to say, the Christians were the first translators of the philosophical text from Greek to Syriac, Syriac to Arabic, mm -hmm. introduced philosophy to the Islamic world in the Abbasid period. And the name of translators, which many people did not consider were Christians or not. No, no, they were Christians. They were Christians and uh, they were start, they've started also talking about the history and the the wide range, uh, range and activities of the Church of the East, which went up to Qatar, to China. Uh, these, I think this uh, have raised a lot of, uh, what you call, awareness among, among the Iraqi uh, society. And thank, uh, thank God His, His, His Holiness Pope Francis made it uh, for, for us really from this to be known. Of course, uh, it would be the responsibility of the church now to continue building yes. on this. And but, also, but also of the government, right? Because Francis's message, you know, was also uh, always one on behalf of religious minorities in particular, right? Basic human rights, legal rights status for people who are uh, minorities in various countries. And that's a message that he proclaims around the world. So the government also has, a, a, I, I presume, a part to play in, in recognizing this and working toward a more kind of integrated society to help Iraq be its best self? Well, let's talk about the responsibility of the church. <laughs> the, government, uh, the government of Iraq, since 2003, there is a lot of uh, I mean, political disputes and which have really, one of it was, uh, was the presence of ISIS. Of course, yeah, uh, the corruption and uh, many and many of of the government figures are have recognized really I and mean, have praised and uh, welcomed uh, his holiness visits. There is no doubt about that. But to implement that message, yeah, on the next day we have, uh, I mean, we've read uh, and uh, the call from the prime minister for all political parties. Uh, for for a reconciliation process, but uh, in the spirit of his his holiness visit, which was really very encouraging, but uh, because the 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 tensity, diversity, and the difficulties of the political situation, I would say well, uh, it would be the responsibility of the people mm. to really uh, build on this, and especially for the church to continue that message, mm -hmm. to continue that, that message and to stress uh, on it in, in any occasion, and which we are doing. The mm -hmm. patriarch, bishops, and other, I mean, Christian writers, uh, yeah, they would, they would always say, this is who we are right from for 2,000 years. That's what we've done for the Iraqi nation. Um, I want to ask you about the meeting that the, the Pope had with the Grand uh, Ayatollah uh, al-Sistani, who's obviously a very senior figure in the Shia Muslim uh, world, um, known as a peacemaker, uh, has done a lot of you know, humanitarian work, supported humanitarian work, etc. Um, they met, I think it was in Najaf, where the, where the Grand Ayatollah lives. There was no transcript of the meeting, just the photos of the two of them getting together um, and sitting there. Um, Everyone sort of interpreted this as, you know, the meeting is the message because yeah. we didn't hear about what they talked about. Uh, how was that meeting interpreted by the Iraqi people? Oh, I mean, for, for, for Iraqi people and especially the Shia community, this was really a very historical me uh, moment uh, as well uh, for them. Uh, yes, his holy they, they are aware that His Holiness 
the main the main goal of the visit is to visit the Christian community and encourage us where we are in the middle of, of this crisis. But uh, they were grateful that His Holiness also found the time and stress about the importance of having this meeting. Uh, you know, this is the what we call a continuous meeting with 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 the Muslims, uh, mm -hmm. which has started in uh, in uh, in Egypt, then in Abu Dhabi, and now uh, in Najaf, um, because uh, His Holiness. I, I would say has a special model for interreligious dialogue mm. where he will not be waiting for the others to sit around the table and and around him and start talking no he would leave his his confidence space the Vatican and go where the other is mm -hmm. the other is different and start talking because going to him raise the virtue of hospitality, the kindness, uh, mutual kindness. And this is really a very important model for the church to take, uh, not to wait in big conferences, workshops. No, no, going where the other is and meeting him where he is mm -hmm. and start to talk to him and make a dialogue, make this, make this encounter uh, a real one. Uh, not about through messages or no no face to face in that sense the the that the whole scene is very powerful mm. of having these two figures they respect each other and uh, i would say the result of of that meeting because there was a statement by by uh, ayatollah sistani office uh, about that meeting but when uh, Ayatollah mentioned that the right of the Christians as uh, citizens, hmm. oh, that's important, because I would say I don't I don't feel that I am first first class citizen in Iraq, hmm. because being living in the uh, in an Islamic country under the constitution which uh, which takes Shari Islamic Sharia as the main source of of uh, of the constitution and many difficulties uh, sure. it's there uh, so to have ayatollah saying citizens christian citizens well it's great in, yeah. in a sense and hopefully uh, later on the peop uh, people politicians uh, would would build on this and to continue so back again it's our responsibility to make right. uh, uh, benefit of of all all of this meet the meeting in itself is, is a historical one as well. Mm -hmm. Do you have a lasting memory or a conversation that you had with Pope Francis or with you know your flock during that visit, uh, or an image or something that you know is, is your sort of main takeaway and and something that you're going to draw from in the years to come to support your ministry? Well, uh, first I uh, I admire his 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 uh, courage to take really this, uh, this step, uh, which meant a lot for us. Uh, second, uh, admiring also and uh, with the gratitude, the work of uh, our young people, mm -hmm. the volunteers, the 300 volunteers who have worked with 14 priests. We have well, myself and Bishop Nazar uh, Ajam, he is the Syriac uh, Bishop in, in, in Erbil, with two priests and my with twelve priests, so only uh, fourteen priests to organize the 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 mass, uh, which was a very spiritual moment for for us. Uh, so I thank God for for that, and I thank God for all the people and hard work that they've done. Um, by nine thirty in the in the evening of uh, uh, the mass, the uh, around all the social uh, media in Erbil. Uh, people posted uh, the, uh, an image of the stadium uh, and there was a post those people deserve respect because our young people cleaned the whole stadium <laughs> and handed everything clean to to the government this is really means a lot uh, that that uh, he said his holiness said that the church uh, here is alive mm -hmm. and that was the first uh, to show people, no, no, 
we have respect also for the public service buildings. Uh, it's, it's a building for all, and that was. Um, His Holiness, I, I was really uh, completely understanding uh, that coming late from Mosul and Karakosh, having a quick lunch, no siesta, when he decided that uh, he will not do the, the tour inside the stadium because he is tired and the mass was already scheduled at four o'clock. I was really shocked, sad, and I <laughs> spoke with the protocol, uh, but Vatican protocol, please, this is, this is impossible. I mean, just imagine the whole visit without a Popo Mobile. I mean, it's, something is not going. <laughs> Oh, they said he's tired. I said, yes, I could see because I was there uh, when he came for lunch at the, at the Chaldean Seminary in, in Ankawa. But I said, God, just make it, just make it. And uh, the protocol also, they came, uh, we came in advance to the stadium to welcome him, uh, his delegation. And I think they've reported to him and to the, his close staff that the scene here in, in the stadium is incredible, and uh, I think you have to make it. Then the words came, prepare the car. <laughs> and uh, something, oh my God, thank God. Uh, you've, I'm sure you've seen the, oh, yes. the whole celebration, but when, when uh, Mr. Allen, uh, Mr. Rudy declared that the mass is going to start, um, the silence was there. Yeah. No one, no one really, uh, was there only for prayer yeah. and that was really uplifting moments and I could see his face that with as the mass started he continued and uh, yeah uh, by at the end of the mass he did it like this <laughs> well he said before that the being around the people energizes him yes. so when he's in need of a siesta he just goes and hangs out with people. Thank God. Thank God. Thank God we were there. Yeah. yeah. Archbishop, thank you so much thank for you. taking the time to speak with us, uh, to share the story of that incredible historic uh, trip. We're praying for you. We're supporting you uh, in any way that we can. Thank you. Thank you. God bless. Thanks for watching. Before you go, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. And for complete coverage of the Pope's historic visit to Iraq, visit americamagazine.org slash Iraq 2021.